I was inspired by Mrs's to ask a few other YouTubers to participate in a game jam with me. I wanted to find Godot YouTubers who were both making really cool projects yet giving back to the community by tutorials and other videos. To that end, I'm thrilled to welcome here with me today Plug World, Rafa, and Artindi. The rules for the jam are simple. We got 48 hours to make a game and we were able to break up those 48 hours however we needed. We were only able to use art from a single art pack, the one bit pack from Kenny. Any sounds or fonts are free game or any other assets, but the graphics had to come from the art pack. Links to everyone's channels, as well as all the games that were made for this jam, will be in the description below so you can use them to play the games if you'd like. I'm really, really excited about the games that we all made, and I think they're an excellent showcase for what Godot can do as an engine, and an excellent showcase of some really awesome people in the Godot community. Let's get started. So this art pack had a ton of variety. There was a lot of things you can do with it, but I ultimately wanted to take a risk and I wanted to do something different that I haven't done before. And so I decided to build a 3D FPS. Now I've never made a 3D game before, so this was all gonna be new to me and I thought it'd be fun to try it out in the game jam. So I got a first person controller set up. It was actually a lot easier than I initially thought it would be. All right, now you can shoot. You can click the mouse button and the gun goes pew pew and now I have a reticle in the game that's like the Minecraft hey. reticle, it inverts the colors so you can actually see it in the dark places, bright places, yeah you know it, you know how it works. I put together my crappy procedural generation system, it's not great, it just literally moves with cubes that destroys the other cubes that makes a path that you walk. Yeah, it's it's terrible, and basically you're going to be wasting a little bit of processing power, but hey, it's a game jam game. I'm just going to go with it, it works, right? Oh, also, there's this wizard enemy guy, he, he shoots fireballs at you, it's super generic, but you know, he gets the job done, he shoots fireballs, they kind of home in on you for a little bit. I'm starting to polish things up a little bit more. I'm trying to get the game feeling good to kill enemies, you know. I have a skull thing that, like, crushes when you kill an enemy. It's it's fun. I'm starting to experiment more with enemies. I've added ghosts that basically are like the wizard. They follow the player, except they go through walls, and they hurt you at melee range. So, yeah, it was, it's pretty cool. I also found an art that actually freaking works. I've basically unshaded everything. I've taking out the textures for the walls and ground it, it, it makes it so the enemies pop more and it also makes it a lot easier to tell between the enemies and the floor and the walls and everything around you and i turned down the resolution so it looks cool now i wanted to give a little bit more purpose to playing this game because it's all randomly generated and it goes on forever so why would you play it i don't know i i added scores and stuff and points so you know you can you can try to get the highest score uh, there, there's a little bit of purpose to that now <laughs> and that's basically everything i mean i i added other stuff like you know tile screen all that other random junk but like that's basically all the core mechanics i don't know i'm pretty happy with the game i've only had like 20 hours out of the 48 hours to actually work on it but you know it's it, i took a risk and i i thought it came out okay so i think uh, it's a win in my book Gunner guy. Let's see what this is about. Sounds good. I like guns. Ooh, sensitivity. Nice. I like, man, the, I love how simple this is. I love how you use the tile set to just make this very simple, but aesthetically pleasing, <laughs> um, interface. This is super cool. So this is a FPS, which is impressive because the, the, um, the tile set that we got was, well, intended for 2D games, but you know, you can do whatever you want. That looks really cool. Oh wow. I have such respect for 3D games. <laughs> oh no! What? So low. <laughs> the fact that there's no lines on the, the walls makes it really... You can only see where you are if you're moving. But... It's kind of hard to see um the projectiles when they're coming just with the way the perspective is. Like it's kind of hard to see where they are in world space. I think, I'm not sure, I, again, I just started playing, but I wonder if there's a way to get the same look, but just slightly less pixelated. So sidestepping is a big thing. I, I like how the camera tilts, it's, that's a nice touch. So does the door just appear after a certain amount of time? I'm really impressed with the generation of the maps. And the different weapons, oh God, it's really cool. I saw a spawning flag over here. I really like the flags that you see where it's spawning next, but it also creeps me out a bit. 
Um, also, I think some of the spawns are a bit... Yeah, dang it. I feel like there should definitely be a radius around the player that the, the enemies cannot spawn. Even if they're starting to spawn. If they're... Yeah. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> um, oh, oh, let's go. What is this? Oh, yeah. Okay, so we got a different weapon. That's cool. I love the little skull effect that appears when they die. It looks really, really, really good. Yeah. Oh, God! <laughs> it's always such a shocking moment. <laughs> Those damn ghosts. I will say, um, this, the sound effects are awesome, and I love the even the small things like the polish in... You know, when that, that like, locate door pop-up came, I was like, locate, and then there's a little animation, and then door. Like, those small things really, really add a lot. So the game was really awesome. Uh, the only thing that I feel like it needs improved is you, you don't want the difficulty to, of the game to be in just the game is difficult, but rather difficulty because of lack of skill. So you want the players to feel like it's hard because I'm not skilled enough rather than it's hard because the game kind of cheeses me. That way they'll be a little bit more vote motivated to play for longer than, than they otherwise would. Otherwise, really a very impressive game for just a 48 hour game jam. So great job. Like I love how you, how you use the effects. I love the little particle splatter. I love the muzzle flash that you added. It's a really, really creative way to use this tile set. I mean, super, super cool. It's just a lot of really small things that make this game super, super cool. Really well done. It's a fantastic game. It has zero fat, not a really surprising gameplay or fancy mechanics, but the things it does, it does very well. The gameplay feels very direct, feels very smooth, and going for 3D was quite a surprise in such a game jam with that kind of asset pack. So props for that. Fantastic little project. After looking at the sprite sheet for five minutes, somehow I had the absolute idea and intention of making a car game. Something with post-apocalyptic stuff in it, because somehow I saw some sprites in the sprite sheet that really just spoke to me, hey, make something post-apocalyptic. So then after I finished the car, I started thinking about the car physics, the car controls. Yeah, and after following some tutorials, to be honest, um, I had something basically working. Um, I made some tire tracks um, using Line 2D and a small script that just spawns points where the tire is. Um, and I also added a little bit of particles. Yeah, you could argue that it's too early to do this kind of polishing, but um, in the end, I think it's very important to get a feel about what the final thing will be. And so I did some research and found a really good um, Reddit post explaining racing car simulations for games. And what I got from that was um, a very, really very simple gear switching system. If the gear is switched, I could play an animation. It felt much more alive and much more like a real car and not like some sprites floating around. Then I started working on some basic environment for the game. I used some parts of the sprite sheet. I combined them in Sprite to create a road texture. You can see here it's, it's working all right. It's not perfect, but a good start. I added a shader to a ground sprite. In my case, I wanted to make it a little sandy, stony texture. The next step, I wanted to create some mountains. And to do that, I used a plugin called SmartShape 2D. So the next most important thing in my game was explosions. As you can see, I created a sprite sheet of different textures from the asset pack that I liked. I also added another layer to the explosion made up of emoji sprite. Uh, I just wanted to make it a bit more funnier and break up the explosion with some elements that are not so usual. And with all the elements enabled, it kind of looked like an explosion. I had the feeling that the explosion needed more glow. So I used a very simple shader to create a gradient that uh, somehow fitted the overall colors of the explosion. At that point in the project, I wanted to start adding enemies. And my first thought was just taking the player car and um, basically changing the controller to an NPC controlled controller. It started to be fun to race around with the other guy that is exactly like you. But uh, I also noticed a problem. Uh, while it was fun to race the other car, it was very boring that crashing the other car, having an impact, 
made no difference at all because it was kinematic bodies. So I thought it would be way cooler to make the player car a rigid body um, so it can react to physics. But yeah, when I had the basic AI <laughs> car done and the guns done so they shoot uh, when they see you and they don't shoot when they're in front of each other the game really started to become potentially fun so yeah <laughs> after the cars i wanted to add some more enemy variation splitting up smaller regions of the sprite sheet combining them animating those uh, single parts but also really helped there was to also animate the scale of the overall character i added that to all characters especially on the attack animations that are very quick and you can see how it really makes it much more interesting much more organic i used the same techniques uh, on the animations for the soldiers so after having some enemies done i started working on some basic maps and you can see here again um, using the smart shape 2d is a really cool way of making quick elements for your maps it made it much more interesting and creating those rocks was very simple as drawing a polygon yeah, and slowly I was starting to create maps. Yeah, I tested it a little bit and there are quite some bugs left, but overall it's a fun game and I'm really happy with the project, how it turned out. Oh my gosh. All right, so this is Franz Fury. Oh, dude, Rafa, you have you have done it. This, uh, wow, the aesthetic is awesome. I like that there's just a simple little controls thing over here. Arrow key, space, shift. Okay, I feel like I got things I need to do. It's just this title too with all this uh, particle effects. That's really cool. First of all, very impressive artwork. I'm sure everybody's going to say that. It's it's like you took the tile set that we were given and used that instead of as tiles as, as a paintbrush to create your own art, which is just very creative, very ingenuitive. Am I just supposed to run them over? Dude, that's awesome. I love the blood effects too. And how they're screaming like when they die. Dude, that's so cool. Can I not kill him? He's like up against the wall. I can't kill him. Okay, maybe now. <laughs> Let's go. The sound effects are really well done. It's uh, kind of has that Mad Max feel that it gives a vibe to. <laughs> Controls are really hard to get used to, but I think I, I think you could probably get used to them. Dude, the way you utilize the tile set so effectively, that's awesome. I love the explosion too. That was such a cool particle effect. It is just absolutely impressive how much stuff you're able to get in here. All this like like four or five AI that acted intelligently. Car driving mechanic. You are a fast working dude. Man, the bullets have a really nice glow effect on them. Like you, you can tell that Rafa is a, uh, a professional artist, that that's his thing, because this game looks amazing. Oh, that's so cool. So the handbrake, that is like, I could do like a full 360. I gotta make you, I actually gotta utilize that because that's really cool. The car is a little difficult to control. I wish it was maybe a little bit more um, easier to control or maybe there'll be some kind of upgrades or something. <laughs> I love the sound effects. This is so good. This is how you make dialogue really entertaining. This is awesome. Perhaps if the gun could be controlled and you could shoot in different directions. I found it was very difficult to actually drive quickly and fight all the many enemies that were there. Also, I like that these uh, little scorpion things lose some of their color as they get hit. It's a nice way to indicate health. Radioactive scorpions. Dude, they're huge. Compared to the guys, they're like massive. I guess that's what you get when you have a radioactive scorpion. It's gonna be massive. I think the way to win this game is um, to just kind of be cautious and take things slow. Like, I just need to pre-fire into where these arrows are, I think. <laughs> yeah, controls are quite a bit difficult, but I think that's part of the fun. Okay, new plan, new plan. Oh my gosh, I'm getting destroyed. The best strategy I found was actually just to sit really far away and just unload on with the machine gun on them from a distance. And I, I didn't feel motivated to play the intended way either because it was so uh, difficult to actually aim at somebody. Holy crap, there's so much going on. <laughs> this is awesome. This reminds me of Bro Force. It's just like constant action explosions. It's awesome. I think the control of the car makes this a little bit harder than it needs to be because when I see this many people, the only thing that's happening is I'm just getting shot from everywhere and I can't really affect it. Those big encounters, you know, I'm already at 45%. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to make it through this level just because there's just so many people firing at me. Overall, just very impressive that this was able to get done in 48 hours. Even, even though like the 48 hours were consecutive, 
that still just blows my mind. Cause the fact that you were able to give this level of polish in 48 hours is pretty incredible. Well, uh, uh, that's awkward. Great job, an excellent Game Jam game, if ever there was one. Okay, that's one down, that's one down. No, we were so freaking close. All right, so I've been playing for 40 minutes now. I still haven't beaten it for the sake of editing. <laughs> I'm gonna end it here. It is an amazing game, phenomenal. I think it'd be better or nicer if there was a way maybe you could repair mid-level. Like maybe if there's a, you know, you could go to one of the people's houses and get your car repaired or something. Something to just kind of give you a checkpoint or a break without having to kill everyone in the level again. But play is really amazing too. I think just some tweaks to the difficulty, maybe some tweaks to the steering and the controls, and this would, I mean, I would play this game for a long time. So I started by looking over the art set. There was a lot of variety there, but the first thing that really screamed out to me was Dungeon Crawler. So I made a guy that could move with top-down controls. I picked one of the most boring sprites for it, but that way more people would be able to relate with it or something like that. I then thought it would be cool if the player could just remove or add walls anywhere in the dungeon. I can't remember now what inspired that idea, but who cares? So I created two assets, one that is an empty space that can turn into a wall, and the other that is a wall that can turn into an empty space. There's only that difference because I wanted them to start as either one or the other for ease of level editing, otherwise they had pretty much exactly the same functionality. So I had my main mechanic, something original that has definitely never been done before. I then spent a few hours brainstorming. The key to a good game is to make everything in the game fit with the main mechanic, so I needed everything else in the game to play off that idea of adding and removing walls. If the player could move the walls, then what if they're trying to move the walls in such a way that they will allow something to get from point A to point B, and then all of a sudden I was making a bouncy glowy thing. It wasn't that hard to think up some enemies after that, and I gave each of them mechanics that could also play off the main mechanic. A bat that would fly at you and could eventually break through walls, a ghost that could pass through walls but move much slower for balance, and a skeleton that left bones behind that could block the wall but would eventually reassemble and chase you again. All of these would die if they were hit by the glowy bouncy thing. Except for the red glowy bouncing thing, which could also break walls, but it would they, you know, like bounce off each other. I don't know, I thought it was kind of cool. I probably should have added more levels with that, but yeah. After that, I started making levels. I'm pretty sure that's what I did next. It's a while ago. I should have taken better notes. I created some simple assets to make it easier to place down large groups of walls or blank areas at a time. And I added a tile set that could not be broken through to be sort of a border in each level, so there was a, you know, a finite space that you can play in. Then I got on Bosca Oil. Who named this? I found a simple tune that I made up like a year ago, but then I, I actually turned it into a song. I feel like the song turned out really well and probably ate up a bit more of my time than I would have liked it to, but you know, you gotta have music. I made a title screen with my name on it. Then I let a few people play it. They told me it sucked and I fixed a few things to make it better. I can't remember what those things are now. Sorry, again, should have taken better notes. But short story shorter, I was out of time and the game was done. Now I just had to wait and see what everybody else thought of it. Whoa, this is a cool star screen. I like that. That was really cool. I really like the kind of tutorial here. Okay, so I can click to get rid of tiles and right click to... I see. Okay, cool. This is really cool. The tutorial, this is a really awesome, clear, simple way to make this happen. Um, I love how clean this game is. I like how you did the WASD thing on the tiles. That's really cool. Yeah, I wish I could just hold the mouse button down and have it continuously delete rather than having to click each time. Okay, so we just gotta clear this out. That's some really cool feedback. I like the screen shake. There we go. And it's gone slow-mo. That's cool. I like how he flies into the level too. That's awesome. I really like the light effects and the screen shake. Everything feels really juicy for, I mean, such a game where you only kick around the ball. It's really cool. I wonder if it wouldn't be better to have like a one-click system where if you click on a tile, um, it will automatically either destroy it or add a new tile based on whether there's a tile that's there already. You don't have to do right and left mouse button. Oh god, enemies, why? <laughs> why would you do that? And it destroys the tiles, what? No. <laughs> they got me. <laughs> they will kill me. So we have to clear this out. Is he breaking them? Yo, he's breaking the blocks. Oh, but they could just break. Okay, that's cool. So they can break those just so you can't trap them. 
And he's dead. Oh, let's go. Oh, I see. Okay, so the ghosts go through walls. I suppose that makes sense. Oh, jeez. Yes. Oh, I'm sure he will respawn. I'm sure he will respawn. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, this is cool. I like how you did the particle effects when it hits. And, oh man, I'm taking damage. I like the lighting effects you also use. The subtle lighting. That's really nice. Like, it glows off the enemies and the ball. Like, it keeps this contrast of yellow and red. I, I think that's really cool. Oh man. Oh no. Oh no, I can't. Oh man. See, this is kind of, that's kind of a bummer. You can get stuck in there like that. Oh wow. <laughs> I managed to do it, but I think it was 90% luck. Whoa, there's a red ball now. I really like how you keep introducing mechanics. Like it just makes it really interesting going through these levels. I really like the sound effects. Oh, it's a destructive one. Whoa, cool. Oh, this is a really cool idea. Oh, I just missed. Dang. Oh, I'm taking damage. Oh, okay. Come on. Ball's gotta work with me. Is there anything up here? Oh, the flag's up here. Oh, okay. So block that off. There we go. We won. Won that level. Let's go. Yeah, another really cool game. I'm really impressed by the creativity. I really liked the juiciness of the game. Introducing different enemy types was really smart. Dude, that was awesome. I like the idea. I like how you went with the just the bouncing the ball and just fully going with it. That was awesome. Wow, yeah, I think overall really awesome game. The simplicity of it is pretty incredible. The sound music like it's just really simple but works really really well. Um, I think it's a little hard to be precise by moving the ball, so I wish that was a little bit better, something. But I mean, overall, like really awesome, simple graphics, really cool use of the tile set. And I thought that was a really good game. I would love to have uh, a bit more control about in which way the ball bounces away from the player. I sometimes had to feel that it was a bit too random. So overall, a great package. Great job. As I was looking at the art pack and trying to figure out what kind of a game I wanted to make, I was reminded of Bennett Foddy's game Quop, which I'd played a few times when I was back in high school, and I thought, wouldn't it be kind of weird with this tile set to make a racing game where you were a sprinter? I started putting the tiles together and trying to make a grass tile, and eventually I had to do a little bit of recombining of the dirt tiles that were in the Kenny set just to make a little bit more coherent of a path just by piecing some of the tiles together. And before too long, I had kind of a really basic level and track that looked all right for what the tile set was. In the spirit of Quop, I decided that I was going to make the player jam and mash the arrow keys or WASD to run and that they would have to do the left and right alternating to get each leg running at a time. And it actually was pretty fun when I tried it. I was able to mash the arrow keys and my character moved and it was pretty fun. And so the thing I did next was try to actually create a race. And I tried using a path follow to kind of create a racetrack, but it didn't really work the way I wanted it to. And so in order to give myself more flexibility, I decided to actually just use position 2Ds and create waypoints along the way. And they just all be housed under one parent node that determined the racetrack. So I added some other sounds and environments like footstep sounds. And all of a sudden I thought I had this really cute kind of funny um, humorous medieval environment where you're a sprinter and the little cartoony footstep sounds I thought just added a nice vibe to the game. I added some other sounds just for when you finish a race or when the race starts and I started working on some menus for the main menu as well as a UI just to be able to show the player what speed they were running at and things were coming together quite nicely. I created a system where I made a bunch of preset determined runners and they would have a different color. So because I was just using a white tile set that I was just able to modulate them as needed and it made it really easy to create unique humorous characters. And so at this point I had enough polish that I thought I really needed to add just a little bit more to the core mechanics of the game. And I thought what better way to do that than letting your runner pull or trip the people running around them. And I really wanted to add this functionality to AI as well. I just didn't get the time and couldn't really figure out the best way to do it So I just added it for the player and it let you press up or down on the arrow keys So you didn't have to actually move your hand from mashing the left and right buttons in order to pull or trip And you would generate threat that if you tried to do something bad in front of a wizard I added these wizard referees just to add a bit of a risk factor to it You'd get frozen and it'd be detrimental because you'd be stuck for a few seconds at this point, now that I had a lot of core mechanics and they were fun to use and play and I thought it was a good experience, I really just needed to focus on adding and finishing out the levels. 
early on I decided that no more than eight was gonna be a realistic number, but I felt like I did need at least six or so to give enough variety to make the game stand out and not just be kind of a similar level. And so I started working on levels and that took up most of my time near the end of the game once I had the UI. And I was actually able to get eight and I kind of just did some simple modulation and changing to add a desert level to get some bridges. I just modified the sprites a little bit, recolored them in a sprite that were in the tile set. And it was really easy to get these different levels. I wanted to make a really cool castle at the end, but I just didn't have enough time to work on and kind of move around all the different castle tiles and tile sets. So I just kind of left it as is. But it was cool because I was able to add a castle level to really round out the game. At this point, pretty much everything in the game was done. I just needed to add some final tweaks to the upgrade system and make it work. And after I had that, I just had to test it a few times and make sure that the money scale I was using um, was actually attainable and that the difficulty scaled correctly. And it was pretty fun, I thought. It definitely wasn't perfect and there were some bugs, but overall I was really, really happy with how it turned out and thankful that I was able to pull in some code and some ideas I'd done for previous games to really add in everything I wanted to to finish out the game jam. All right, that thou shalt sprint, the, the 11th commandment. <laughs> So now let's have a look at the next game. It looks really funny. Runner name. Ooh. Yeah, Tindy. Runner color. Let's do blue. Heck yeah. Really good music. That really fits. That's awesome. I like how you did this tile set right here too, just scrolling across. Well, there's a lot of these. Holy crap. There's a lot of courses. Let's go. Oh, oh, oh. Use the up arrow key to trip another runner, which will knock them out for a few seconds. Oh, that's cool. Okay. I gotta say, the sound design in this game is amazing. Like, just the little footsteps and the music. Oh, it's awesome. Race results. Second place. Basically, I suck. <laughs> nice little music tune. That's, that's good. At the same time, I think it's good and bad that you keep showing the tutorial every time. People might just get it all down there just like yeah i'm just trying to beat the tutorial level and you don't need to see all of the information acceleration absolutely let's go for that more acceleration of course let's go <laughs> i love those animations i love the map design too it's really that's awesome this is cool so this is a lap system now because we're on one big circle so i can actually overlap people my hands are gonna get tired i'm at full speed i, lo I love the animation it's very very nice. I like the, the concept. It is just a really simple concept and it, it uses the art in a very creative way. This guy is too fast. What the hell? I'm totally gonna trip him. Oh, like, this guy's a lightning. Let's do one more acceleration and now let's try. Let's try this one now. I think I might stand a chance. Acceleration, max speed, Black River. I'm not gonna make it. I need more max speed. I'm catching up to you. It seems like that happens quite a bit though. You like reach your max speed and you're running to like, you're basically, you know you're not gonna win. Maybe if there's like some way of, of catching a boost or something. Hey, and it's a new environment too. It's a desert, that's cool. No, we're so close. <laughs> Rolf, son of Rolf. Ah, oh, false Rolf, okay. This would be really cool if it was multiplayer. That, that would be really cool. My threat level's like still really high because I haven't upgraded that at all. So this is really cool that you actually have to push buttons. So it, it makes you actually feel like like you're racing. More max speed. It's all about max speed. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pull ahead by cheating. <laughs> it's always good to just pick them off right at the start. That's how we roll. Oh, we barely made it first. Oh, that was awesome. Oh. Ooh, made a whole castle. I like it. You're using the two bridges idea again, but you're making it part of, like, it's so much more different this time. It's like castle bridges. Oh, congratulations on your victory. You are now recognized as the best sprinter in the entire kingdom. See, that's, that's so cool. Cool game. A lot of fun. Uh, I like the theme. It was um, unusual, but very creative. The background and the tile sets were very cool, very creative, a lot of variation. The movement of the characters and the path they took look really organic. It was funny to see that combination. I guess if I had to pick one thing that could be done better, definitely could be done better, is the tutorial. I think the tutorial could have been an invisible tutorial or I don't think you really needed it. But besides that, it's all really great.
There could have been some more interaction from the NPC side. Maybe they could also trip you. Some kind of rubber banding so the NPCs that are more in the back catch up to create a bit more tension in the field. But overall, really cool game, very creative use of the asset and um, yeah, funny. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. You win. No, this was a really good game. Like even just here, like the UI is so intuitive and easy to like handle. Like, oh, it was awesome. Everything about it, sound design, everything is great. Thanks so much for watching everyone. I hope you really enjoyed this video and got to see some awesome Godot creators at work. Make sure to go subscribe and follow all of their channels and I'll see you in the next video.